couldn't see that the creative people were the center of the business. The business doesn't focus and revolve around the creative people. A lot of people are switching to DaVinci Resolve. The first reason that so many filmmakers are switching to Resolve is stability. But still, DaVinci was a whole nother beast. I needed to empower creative people. In DaVinci Resolve. The DaVinci Resolve editor keyboard. We're inside Resolve and DaVinci Resolve. To DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve. This one's big. No need for that, as Resolve can handle those color transformations automatically. Underlines, outlines, boxes, glow effects, reflections. Casey Ferris. Now, even if you're not super into fusion, I really want you to try this. That's kind of my V3. Better be good. Little tips and tricks in the venture result. But really, to me, the core of the industry is actually created passion. He loves, she loves, and I love black magic design from their amazing affordable cameras in which I've never really used personally but I've heard great things and their amazing Kodak black magic raw to DaVinci Resolve where all the editors love to make our cuts they're constantly improving constantly listening to feedback and constantly implementing new ways to support creative both in their NLE and with all of their products from humble beginnings in an Australian garage to being used by broadcast companies from all over the world for both news, sports, and even many Hollywood movies. You can use Blackmagic Design's product and know that you are going to have the best. But the truth is that Blackmagic is not just some wild magical entity, it is a real thing made by real people. And today, if you've ever wondered about where Blackmagic came from, the ideas that brought it to life, and all of the products in chronological order by time, date, and what made it so great, then you're in luck because today is my version of Blackmagic Design's history. I'm going to try to make it entertaining while also trying not to miss any important breakthroughs. I'm not going to say that I'm going to hit every single product, but I'm going to try to hit every single product that really matters as far as the industry moving forward with technology and ease of use. What made that product so good for that time and kind of how it all came to be. Now, I wasn't in the industry for all of those things, so I'm gonna do my best. Unlike many of the corporations that run this industry, Black Magic Design was actually founded of this millennium in 2001 by the great CEO, Grant Petty, out of his garage in Australia. Prior to starting Black Magic Design, he was a colorist and post-production engineer. I think it probably all started right there in Shepparton, Australia, where Grant's high school got a grant to build a TV production studio. There, Grant was able to experience a little bit of the industry and learn a great many things. He went on to college but soon dropped out, teaching himself how to program with an Apple II, and then went on to work in Singapore in a TV broadcasting setting. And there in Singapore is where he became very disillusioned with the industry as a whole. As much as he loved working in in the industry with all the equipment and the talent, he realized that the suits were the ones calling the shots and they weren't very creative. And a matter of fact, the creatives had to listen to them as they were the ones with the money and controlled the very expensive gear that basically nobody could get their hands on but large companies and people with a lot of money in their pockets. You see at that time, production equipment was extremely expensive because it was extremely specialized. It was mainly proprietary electronic boxes for one purpose or another. This was right at the time when computers were starting to become more and more powerful every year. And Grant knew that the industry was gonna be shaped in a big way and he wanted to be a part of it. Well, Grant, when machines started making products, Design also became an industry. I think everyone underestimated what happened during the Industrial Revolution. To me, that's also when design kicked off mm -hmm. because the machines make the products. Now the craftsmanship is actually in the design of products, which are then mass produced, so we can all have them. It's quite a simple model. Grant knew that they could both do better and perhaps even make it cheaper. So after a couple years in Singapore, he went back to his hometown and started Black Magic Design in 2001. One thing to note about Grant is Grant still programs. He learned on that Apple II computer and then when he came back and started his own business, Blackmagic Design, he continued to program in many of the business functions and stuff like that. He actually wrote the programs that run his business. Software that I've written. So I've personally written all the software that runs the company itself. That way we don't have to have a whole lot of operational people. So I know exactly what the operations are because it's running through my code. So, sorry, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. For a reseller orders a product from us, 
Yes. Our customer orders some products. That immediately flows into the factory and if they don't have stock, they'll build it. So within five minutes, they could actually be building a product that just got ordered before a sales office even knows. It's build, it'll automatically order all the parts for it. They could be shipping stuff in containers or air freight or wherever. You know, like this whole system is running on code that I've written. So, you know, you know intimately what's going on. Which I know very little about, but it's very impressive for any CEO to think the way that he does. And one thing that I think separates him from the rest of the people that are running the industry. Then in 2002, Blackmagic released their first product, which was a capture card, and it soon became a small lineup of products known as Decklink. But these capture cards weren't capture cards like capture cards of today. These capture cards weren't made for streamers and the likes, because that barely existed at the time, other than maybe TV broadcast, you could argue. But these capture cards were actually designed to take analog signals from, say, a VHS tape or something similar and digitize it so that you could then edit it in a digital NLE, such as Avid, the original Final Cut, and I believe Premiere was something at that time as well. So after the success of the first couple capture cards, they had enough money, enough backing to then open a production house studio in Singapore where they worked on many different types of production and took on clients and did actual projects within the industry in that way. This production house quickly became one of the most sophisticated and technologically advanced production houses in Asia. Fast forward two years and it seems like Blackmagic must have been doing pretty good in the production industry as their capture cards must have been selling and they must have been making a lot of money in production because they announced in 2006 that they would acquire DaVinci Systems which is a whole nother can of worms and a much more complicated history that I don't even want to get into here as far as what DaVinci Systems is and how many trade-offs and different companies and different associations and what that actually was, but this was a big deal. Because prior to Blackmagic, this was almost a legendary software with very few having access to it. If you do want to know more about the history of Resolve itself, the software, and DaVinci Systems, and all the different stuff that happened in that, I'll try to link a video in the description from a channel called Learning Color Grading, which is an amazing learning channel if you're learning the software. He did a history of DaVinci Resolve and DaVinci Systems and covered all that. He does a great job, so go watch him for that. $800,000, but that, of course, in particular configurations. Usually, it's much cheaper. You can get your hand on Resolve by paying like $250,000 only at the time. It, it wasn't that expensive. In 2010, they released Ultrascope, which was a waveform monitoring device. This was a way to hook up an external device to a regular PC and monitor the waveform while you were color grading. Then in 2014, Blackmagic released their real first professional camera, I would say, the Ursa. The Ursa was strange because it's almost competing with something like an Alexa or a Sony. Sony FX7, I guess, would be at the time, but it shot raw, raw Kodaks, or at least raw compressed Kodaks, and similar to their Pocket series, it was aimed more at the lower end, but it was much more expensive than their pocket cameras. In my opinion, you can definitely tell by the design of the Ursa, they were still getting their footing, and I believe they still are getting their footing as far as the way that the camera is designed. But one thing that they always nailed was functionality and codec support, or at least compressed raw codec support. The colors always looked great. Just a year later, they announced the Ursa Mini. This was a smaller form factor. They again listened to lots of feedback, added a bit more portability ability to the whole functionality of the Ursa system. Still shooting in ProRes and compressed formats, Black Magic Raw wasn't a thing yet, but it would soon be so. I mean, just a year later is like a blip of an eye when it comes to a corporation. That is moving at light speed compared to many of the competitors within the field of, of video, especially back then, which wasn't that long ago, the industry is just moving faster and faster, and I do think that Black Magic has kind of pushed the industry along as far as Resolve has continually pushed into the NLE field, not just color grading and implementing Fusion and, and Fairlight, that it's kind of kicked Adobe and many other companies into gear to get more competitive. I hope that goes for Final Cut as well, but it seems like Mac is just maybe thrown in the towel at least for professionals and saying 
black magic is uh, the one taking the rings but I always like more competition even though I'm a huge Resolve fanboy. Moving into 2016 this is the first time that they release a monitor that has uh, ProRes recording enabled so you can record externally with cameras that support it and uh, yeah I've never used one but they look really good and they continually get firmware updates and they've released different models throughout the years but 2016 was the first time that Blackmagic entered the market of external recorders on monitors. 2018 was a gigantic year because this is the year we're all waiting for. This is the year that Blackmagic RAW was introduced. I think that was probably the biggest thing that was introduced in 2018, at least as far as I'm concerned. And what's crazy about Blackmagic RAW is it is not a proprietary format. They have released it and it is open source. It joined the likes of other compressed RAW formats such as ProRes that we've been talking about so much among others. But the difference is, is they allow more companies to use it. Blackmagic RAW is now one of the three compressed formats that I like to use with the ones that people generally use as editors although it still hasn't yeah i mean i've never heard anybody using like black magic raw proxy not that it might not come someday but it's come up with the likes of like prores and dnx hr or hd originally owned by avid 2018 was also the year they released the black magic pocket 4k which shot prores but also black magic raw so it was kind of a hand in hand thing. They also released the eGPU for certain Macs with Thunderbolt 3 and AMD GPUs, basically giving the power to the Macintosh because before then and a little bit afterwards until Mac Silicon really took off, uh, you couldn't really get the power of graphics that you necessarily needed for some of the visual effects and stuff on Mac without an eGPU enabling you to have graphics unless you were going to pay for you know like a mac pro 2019 they brought multi streams to the masses and this thing's still widely used with the atm mini launch the atm mini wasn't only portable but if you got the iso version you could actually record multi-cam clips straight into it in hd i'd like to see something like an atm that records four to eight tracks of 4k i don't know that would just make my life easier and it's just cool it's just cool it's not really needed but it, it'd be cool for like interviews and stuff you just record four tracks of 4k maybe with a thunderbolt 5 or something like that in 2020 they released the ursa 12k which is something red hasn't even done 12k is, is so much resolution black magic raw only you don't i don't think you can even shoot prores there's a bunch of different formats and unlike red there's less cropping into the sensor in different formats meaning that you can capture the entire sensor in 8k and it's down sampling from 4k therefore less noise and just a better overall image I've seen lots of examples of this footage but i've never personally worked with it although i'd very much like to. Among many professional and very expensive tools Blackmagic released in 2020, the one that means the most to me because it's where I got my first studio license that came with it was the Speed Editor. And uh, I got it right after the sale, but I paid $150 extra and got this for 400, I think maybe I got it for $50 cheaper, but I got it for 400 or $450. I got the Speed Editor and the studio version of uh, Black Magic DaVinci Resolve, which I had already been using the free version for quite a while. But they also released the editor's keyboard, which also looks very cool, also has a turn dial, which is my favorite part and most people's favorite part about the speed editor. It's cool, but I have a certain way of editing and in both cases, I wish they were more customizable. You can customize the keyboard just like any other keyboard within the software. However, because the buttons are labeled and other companies do that as well where they have like their button layout I don't know I just don't buy keyboards in that way I'd rather put stickers on the ones that I'm learning and now I know like I have a certain way of putting my keyboard my key bindings and I use basically the same layout in every editing software and it's very different than 
any of them and they're all different from each other so when it comes to editing keyboards it's like okay if you're like a professional editor that only works in that program and they come out with that keyboard i mean you could just ignore it but i don't know it's pet peeve of mine i don't even know why i'm adding this into the video but uh this video is making me uh hallucinate or that's not the right word but this video is insane i'm gonna admit, like they just have so many products and most of them are made for studios so I know I'm missing a lot. This, this is a prosumer video. Getting closer to the present year, 2021, they released the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Although it's not full frame, it does have ND filters and people argue about the design. It has a very similar design to the Pocket 4K. It has ND filters and an EF lens mount. A lot of indie filmmakers to use it to this day. And of course it shoots ProRes and Blackmagic RAW. In 2022, they also released the Blackmagic Pocket 6K G2, which was very similar to the Pocket Pro, or the Cinema Pocket Pro 6K, except it didn't have ND filters and it was over $1,000 cheaper. There's some other differences as well too. It still had a connecting viewfinder. Of course, it was the best bang for buck. Now we're reaching the modern day. Just last year, 2023, they released the full frame cinema camera, which is a weird name because it looks like a pocket. And now you can't shoot ProRes, but you can you can only shoot Black Magic RAW at least internally. But this is a full frame L mount, which is the new you know, the new thing if you're in the industry. 2023, they also made a big move, which does worry some fans about the future of like subscriptions and stuff but they've said that they aren't releasing a subscription but for more bigger production houses like to rent licenses so they don't have to buy them all at once or they can distribute them to individuals online so they release Blackmagic Cloud and now there's like incredible proxy flows and you can have your iPhone connect to the cloud and shoot with the Blackmagic app which is something else they released in 2023. Now in 2024 they're releasing the Pixis which is the same sensor as the full frame cinema camera and honestly I think would better fit the name as the full frame cinema camera also with L mount but you can also get it in EF or PL. And I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff, but honestly, this this project was too big for my brain. And I have like three other projects I'm working on right now for myself, plus a few that I'm trying to get done for some clients. And if you need an editor, let me know because I'm an editor, we can, we can talk. But otherwise, I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff and I don't know if I want to continue making these types of projects or not. I like to get more personal and make more filmmaking type videos, but I also want to do well in the algorithm. So I don't know what this channel's doing. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you think of this video. Honestly, this last part of making this video has been kind of a drag because it's hard to find a lot of this information and I've never used most of this stuff. I don't know, like and subscribe. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what I missed. I love black magic though. Um, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have gotten as far as I have. So thank you to Blackmagic and Grant Petty.